Well, good morning. Am I on? Yeah, there we are. Good morning, everybody. Glad you could join us for worship. If you're watching us online or on Channel 6, we'd like to welcome you as well and uh, welcome you to our worship here at Epworth United Methodist Church. Uh, I want to pass along a few announcements in your bulletin. If you happen to pick up a bulletin here this morning, we have a Bible study that's starting on Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. And it starts from 6 to 7 o'clock, and it does not say where it'll be held, but it will be held up in the TV studio on the second floor on the uh, West Wing there. So just want to pass along. If you can't make any of the sessions on Wednesday night, you're welcome to purchase the book. You can follow along right there with the video on Right Now Media. If you have your account set up with Right Now Media through the church, then you can uh, take part that way. Uh, you also find another announcement on the back there. We want to pass that along to you, the Angel to Angel program. Uh, take some time to uh, take a look at that. I don't know of any announcements. Uh, I'm rather shocked to see Scott in orange and black. I'm sure he's going to have a story about that here in a minute. Because I've got this crimson and cream one upstairs, and it's just giving me the willies. <laughs> We're just glad you've joined us for worship as we put the uh, the all the world beside us right now. Let's just put it out of our mind, the COVID, elections, all of the stuff that's just, just festering out there. Let's put it aside and let's concentrate on worshiping God this morning. But let us stand and join together in our call to worship. Come share the joy of the Lord. Praise God who gives each person a special gift to be nurtured and shared. Lord, we thank you for these gifts. Come, let us worship God who entrusts us with so much. morning. We will start with staying in your love this morning.
This nation has always been defined by a dream. A dream to achieve and live beyond the fold. Innovation, creativity, and freedom are hallmarks of this American dream. But this dream comes with a cost. And it's not preserved without self-sacrifice. The men and women who serve our country are not just soldiers. They are defenders of freedom. They are protectors of our rights to pursue happiness. We use words like honor, courage, and bravery to describe our veterans. They have taken turns standing guard over the dream that makes America so special. The freedom to live, love, and worship God is possible because of our veterans. This is what makes America so special and what makes our veterans heroes. Next part of our worship service is where we uh, go to God with all our prayers, all our concerns, all our worries, all our wants. And if you're watching this morning, our prayer list is found on the bulletin, which is at the bottom of the website. You can click on that. You can get the most active, most current uh, prayer list we have on our website. And here in the sanctuary, of course, if you have your bulletin, you have that as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. God of all creation, God of all creatures, who in love made an everlasting covenant, with us. You sent Jesus to seek and to save the lost. Now we confess that we are, we've strayed from you sometimes. We have been willful. We've been prideful. Lord, we just ask that you have mercy on us. Forgive us. Return us from the wilderness that to the paths of righteousness. Lord, you love us beyond compare. We know that. And, we're, and you are faithful to us, even when we do turn away. You're patient. You're wise. Lord, you're caring. And you're just. We admit that we're not worthy of your love for us. We're deserving of your good favor. Because we've sometimes ignored your will. We've treated others of your children with disdain. We fail to be grateful for your mercy. We've also failed to recognize your blessings. Lord, forgive us once again. Restore us to the right relationship with you and with one another. Lord, we just come to you this morning at a time in which there is so much uncertainty. So much negativity. Lord, we just ask that you would help us let and make your light shine. Let them see you through us. Let us be your children that you've called us to be. Lord, to spread that goodwill. To spread your love to those who feel unloved. Lord, we know you're with us each and every day. Sometimes we don't think about it, but Lord, we have the comfort in our faith to know that you are there. Lord, help us make, it, make us through these days, the days of uncertainty, the days of sickness, the days of pain, and the days of lost. Lord, help us see you through all that. Lord, we give you thanks and we give you praise this morning. And we take time now in the silence of our own hearts to lift up our own personal prayers to you this morning.
Now together we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As Steve had mentioned, I was wearing my mask, which someone went to a great deal of trouble to make sure that uh, I had this uh, beautiful mask. And uh, Steve has uh, one that happens to be crimson and cream. And, you know, and, and because of that, they, uh, you know, they, they gave me the OSU Cowboys and him the, the OU mask. And we made a deal that, you know, whenever next week comes around, if... Uh, if if the the Sooners win, then he'll be wearing the Sooners one, and and I'll be if the the Cowboys win, I'll wear the Cowboys mask. And um, but you know, someone I mean, they really went to a lot of trouble to make sure I had this, and and I I just didn't want them to be disappointed because I won't be wearing it next week, and so I decided I would wear it this week, you know, to make sure that they got their enjoyment out of me actually wearing it, right? Oh, the fun we have, right? <clears throat> Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the, the gospel of Matthew, beginning the 25th chapter at the 14th verse. Listen for God's word for you. For it is if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went out at once and traded with them and made five more talents. The same, in the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, the master of those uh, slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter in the joy of your master. And the one who had two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter in the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and I hid the talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But the master replied to him, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew that I did not, uh, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and on return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Many years ago, I heard a story and I'd not thought about it um, until I ran across it a few weeks ago. And um, the, the story, as I had, had read it, was uh, a woman had gone into Walmart and she had done her shopping and, 
uh, had a cart full of groceries and other things she was bringing out and she came to her car and when she got to her car, there were four men sitting in the car. And, um, you know, being like a lot of folks who are around here, she uh, had a concealed carry license and she pulled her gun out of her purse and uh, she told them to get out of her car and uh, the men were shocked. They got out of the car, they ran off as quick as they could and she uh, kind of shaken, you know, from the whole experience. Most of us never have to deal with anything like that. And so she loaded up her groceries and things she'd purchased into the car and she got into the car and no matter how she tried, she could not get the key to go into the ignition. And uh, she began looking around and realized Actually, this was a car that looked very similar to hers, but it was not her car. And she looked and hers was about four places over. And uh, very embarrassed, she put all the things into her car and still shaken, she decided she should go to the police station. And she drove to the police station to turn herself in. And uh, the, the officer who was taking, you know, there at the desk, you know, she comes in and, and uh, tells, what had happened, you know, what she had done and how she had made this mistake. And, and he just begins laughing and laughing and laughing as he pointed over to the four men who were at the other end of the room who had come in to complain about the white haired lady, five foot tall, who had carjacked them. Now we've all probably had some similar experience, you know, a vehicle that looks similar to ours. And, you know, I, I, in fact, the other day, I just walked right past my car, you know, and uh, thinking I'd park someplace else. And then, you know, it was a little lost as I tried to figure out where mine was. We all have that experience. It's a bit disorienting. Uh, the thing is that it was not her car. Um, and, and that's the mistake she made. Now, all was forgiven. No charges were pressed or anything. You know, it was a mistake. She, uh, it, it wasn't her car. Um, but, but we all, in some ways, kind of make a similar mistake in our lives. We think that what we have in our lives is ours. Um, that wasn't her car. Um, her own car really was not her own. All the cars in the parking lot we're all owned by the same person. That's the Lord. All of creation, everything that is, uh, was provided to us from the Lord. There's nothing we have that uh, is truly ours. Um, it, it's something we have for a while, but has been entrusted to us. We are, if you will, managers of what the Lord has provided in our life. Uh, we may feel like Oh, I earned those things. I worked hard to be able to have those, but, but God provided everything else for us that we have. Um, none of us really are uh, a person on our own. We all are dependent upon what the Lord has done for us. And uh, the Lord has provided in our lives. Uh, we are like managers and the Lord is the one who is the owner of everything. I, I was thinking about this. Maybe the best analogy I can think of is, is my retirement account. You know, since I was 24, became a pastor ordained, and um, monthly, I made a deposit into that retirement account. I didn't pay attention to it for a long, long time. Now I get more and more interested in it, you know. Uh, as I can begin to see a day whenever uh, I might retire and I will need it. And I have entrusted it to the good folks at our board of pensions office who have managed it well. It has done well. Um, but there's going to be a time when I will need it. And if they treat it as if it's theirs, maybe they want to go buy a boat for the summer, you know, for their family. They use that money of mine to go do it. Um, I'll not be real happy when it comes time for uh, uh, retirement and withdrawing it. There's, there's a sense in which maybe it's maybe the closest analogy we can understand that um, we park something, we set it aside for a day when it will be needed and there will be a time when we will call upon it to be there. And the Lord in the same way entrusts to us uh, what we have in our lives to be able to enjoy, to share, to, to love, and to, to, to have in our lives, and then uh, to be able to give in return. 
back to the Lord, to others who are in need. Uh, it's an important part of how we understand uh, our role in life as, as managers. Um, and we want to be good stewards of what God has provided to us. Uh, it's been a growing place in my spiritual understanding. Um, Angie and I have always given uh, from what the Lord had provided through the ministry of the church. It's a, been an important part. When we were uh, beginning in ministry, we had not tithed. We had not given 10%. So it took us a couple of years to, to move from where we were. And we made a real deliberate plan uh, to increase our giving each year on a percentage basis till we got to that place. Um, it's important that we, we approach such things with a, a plan about how we give back to the Lord from what God has given to us. But, and I've always understood that. It, um, has, but, but understanding that my life is not my own, that's a bigger deal. Um, to understand that you are not mine, we are not each other's. That's something that has dawned on me more and more uh, with time. It's maybe wisdom. Maybe we, you, you know, you, we can't know everything. But as I, as I mature in my faith, and I think about the people that have been a part of our lives, and, um, and, and the, the phrase that comes from our uh, liturgy in the funeral, that before this person was ours, they were yours, Lord. And now we give them back to you. In thinking about the time when they pass, uh, the person that we've had the privilege to share life with uh, feels like they're ours, but they're not. They're the Lord's. Uh, we are the Lord's. Um, that lesson that we talked about a few weeks ago where it said to render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar and to God the things that are God's. Even Caesar is God's. I mean, that's kind of the point, right? Um, even Caesar has to account for his life to God. Um, we all are God's. Um, that's apostrophe, yes, you know, by the way. Uh, we are all God's children. Um, we belong ultimately to him. We are even not our own. And the people in our lives are entrusted to us and we get to celebrate life with them and, and, and love and enjoy and laugh and to be present with each other. But ultimately, they're not ours either. They're the Lord's and we return them to the Lord. I was thinking about that. I was thinking about when you marry and the vows that you say, to have and to hold. Um, we have them. A spouse for a while, we hold them. But ultimately, they are entrusted to us in the care of God, and, and they are God's. And uh, we return them to the Lord, or they return us to the Lord um, when that time comes, because ultimately, we're not our own, and we are not each other's. We are the Lord's. That, that means we are each other's, but just in a, in a shared way, not to that phrase have, um, we don't possess, uh, but we get to, to hold, to be with each other. I think it's a deep spiritual understanding that, uh, that the Lord teaches us that, that, that life is not all about us and what we have, that ultimately we are the Lord's and we rest in the Lord. And the practice of giving um, in the life of the church uh, in ways that we give beyond the church uh, is a practice of knowing that, that we, we don't put ourselves at the center, but God is at the center and it reminds us of that on a regular basis. Giving is a way that we remember that. Um, it's, there are all kinds of ways, all kinds of ways that giving's important. Giving's important because uh, the ministry of the church. Um, we do amazing things through our apportionment giving that uh, affects the, the world round. 
missions that, that go all around the world in terms of sharing the gospel with people who don't know Christ, but also in very practical ways of dealing with uh, teaching people how to, to, you know, how, how to grow crops. There's a farm uh, in, in uh, Kenya where they, just on weekends, they invite farmers from the surrounding area to come and they, they teach people how to grow crops. It's sponsored by the United Methodist Church. It's paid for by the United Methodist Church. And it, and it affects people's lives all over. Um, a, a friend of mine, Stanley Guitari, he was here a few years ago uh, from, from Kenya. He now has a, a eucalyptus, uh, I don't know if you call it forest, a arbor, uh, and that he grows and collects. And it, it provides, in addition to his work, at the hospital in Maua, at Maua Methodist Hospital. It provides for him uh, an income for his family uh, in addition to the work at the hospital. Stanley uh, does that. It, it's an amazing thing, the way that, um, that we get to support mission and ministry through the, the work of the church, um, through the Samaritan Fund that, that you all support. Um, People come by here almost every day, it seems like, several times a week, um, needing help with utilities. And we provide a good bit of help. It's, it's $50. Someone comes in with a bill, maybe uh, $150 uh, to, that they, they can't pay at the time. Um, the truth is most people can come up with part of it, um, whether they have some funds or someone they know can help them. Um, usually what happens is in partnership with Salvation Army or another church, uh, if they're willing to get their part of it together, another church contributed part of it, we do $50 and, and we're able to help them to keep that utility service going. And, um, and we, we do that. There are times when we do more than that. Um, there's sometimes there are needs that come in that just seem absolutely overwhelming and we find ways to do more than that. But but um, provide help. There are folks who come by every Wednesday. Not They don't come every Wednesday. Different people come on Wednesdays to get vouchers to go to the food pantry and to, to have food provided that they can take home uh, to prepare. It's an important ministry. There are folks in our church who are part of mobile meals and delivering meals to, to folks. Um, it's a part of, of their service and care. Uh, we have two teams that prepare meals for the soup kitchen. And um, as I understand it, we're having over 200, 250 people come in on a regular basis for that. People who are uh, providing that. Some of the people who do the cooking um, donate the food that they, they're preparing. Uh, some of the food is purchased through the church, through the Samaritan Fund. There's a number of ways that that's supported. Um, our daycare makes a huge difference in the lives of kids in this community. And that's an investment that goes for years and years and years in the life of, of this community. Those kids who are here, half of them, their parents pay cash to be here. The other half are on DHS support. And, um, and that ministry of the daycare is supported by about $40,000 underwritten out of uh, support from the, the life of the church. That comes in utilities that we pay in our church budget, uh, insurance that's paid for the program, just a variety of things, staff support to help oversee and to keep the ministry of the daycare going. It's an investment, it's a, a ministry, and it's supported, only way it can happen is through the support of the budget in our local church. Um, it's important work that we do together. Uh, money that goes to circle and care and to team ministries, the education employment ministries where folks in Oklahoma City at team, they come in and they go through training uh, for job training. Um, they're taught skills about how to use computers and how to type and you know, just all different kinds of basic skills that people are in need of. They're taught how to do an interview for a job, how to, uh, how to manage money and finances, all those things that are, are done there. Uh, they prepare them through the class. They, 
get them clothes to be able to suitable for going to, to work in a setting and then they help lined up job interviews for them so that they can move from a place of needing employment and dependence to a place where they're working and become self-sufficient. Uh, those are ministries that are supported through the life of our church uh, in, in some ways through people who were very generous to, to leave uh, mineral rights to the church and we get to manage and steward them. Uh, and, and as those funds come in, we send them on to be able to support Circle of Care, uh, which obviously works to help uh, with children who, who don't have homes in foster care, through children's homes that are available, and then through team ministries. Those are important, important works that can only happen because of how we choose to see ourselves as a church and as individuals, as Christians, as managers of what God uh, has entrusted to us. Um, they're important things because we support the whole ministry of the church. Um, that doesn't even touch on what things happen in the ministry of this congregation. Um, those are ways that we share out beyond ourselves. Um, the, the work of, of the church uh, is a part of that ministry, um, it's part of what God is doing in the world. And uh, we have a, an amazing privilege to be a part of it, uh, to help be stewards uh, of it, to, to have and to hold. And to remember that it's really not ours, it's the Lord's, uh, that the Lord has entrusted to us to, to serve and, and to oversee. Um, we get to this time of the year where we talk some about stewardship, where we make commitments for how we want to support the ministry and work of the church for the coming year, return of what we have uh, to the Lord through the ministry of the church. As we uh, come to that time, it, it, it's always a little embarrassing, um, honestly, to be in this role of, of talking about money and asking about how we support it. Um, but if we didn't believe in the ministry of the church, we'd never be able to do it. Um, if we didn't believe in what God has called us to do and to be and, and to serve, then um, it, it would be an impossible task to, to do. Uh, but because we believe in it and because I know you believe in it, we're able to do that. Uh, if you haven't received it in the last day or so, and probably tomorrow if you haven't, um, you'll receive a letter at home and it'll, uh, in the letter, uh, we'll talk about uh, support for mini the ministry of the church. Uh, there's a, a sheet that's put there that talks about reasons we give and invites you to read through those. There'll also be a commitment card asking you to make a commitment for how you want to give through the, uh, the life of the church as a response to what God has uh, entrusted to you. Um, we invite you to fill those out. Uh, if you're at home and not coming to participate, uh, you can mail those back in. You can drop them by the church. Uh, if you're going to be here, I invite you to, uh, uh, when you come, so that you can you know, see Steve wearing his OU mask next week. Um, invite you to come and be here next Sunday. And uh, we'll have a time in the service where we will, as a part of worship, bring those commitments forward. Because they're, it's not just a financial exchange. It's really an act of our faith. Um, and, and so we want to treat it as such. It's, it's an act of worship. Um, when we contribute in the offering, it's not just that we pay our dues. It's, it's an act of worship. Uh, it's a part of what we do in response for what God has done for us. So invite you to do that prayerfully, to think uh, clearly about what you believe God's calling you to do and to help support the ministry of the church. Uh, you receive those, and, and I know you will act faithfully because you have, and uh, you will continue to do so. So I want to thank you and to share that and to lift up that opportunity. Um, the car that the lady was driving, the, trying to drive, it wasn't hers. Um, any more than any of the things that we have in our lives are our own. Uh, let us live as those who know that God has entrusted us with what we have and that we're managers and stewards on the Lord's behalf. Amen.
Next part of our worship service is about the offering, as Scott had mentioned. I have to add that this church, since I've been here, has been so much in forward thinking. I mean, who would have thought, while other churches were scrambling to get their services on the web, we didn't have to scramble because you all had the forethought to think about that three and four years ago. And what a blessing that's been. So as Scott mentioned, all the ministry is taking place. Just know that ministry is still happening, whether we're disconnected because of the COVID or you're having to stay home to protect yourself, which we fully support. But know that ministry is still going on as we go through each and every day. As we have our time of offering, I want to remind those who might be watching online, you can mail your check to 420 West Iowa, or you can go to the website, epworth.info. In the top right-hand corner, there's a button you can push. You can pay through our Push Pay app as well. So just want to remind you all here in the sanctuary, we're not passing the plate. You'll find them here at the corners of the altars, altar here at the, at the front of the church as we have our time of offering this morning. Let us stand and affirm our faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, for our sending forth, we will be doing You Never Let Go. Go in peace, go in love. 